Hi, my name is uh, Ronnie Foss, uh, and I'm a professor of medicine at Case Western Reserve University. And I'm also uh, the director of the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at Metro Health Medical Center in Cleveland, Ohio. And I will be presenting uh, the uh, topic, efficacy and safety of on-demand vanoprazone versus placebo in the treatment of heartburn in symptomatic non-erosive reflux disease patients. This was a phase two randomized controlled trial. So to understand the reason for this study, we have to remember that uh, many patients prefer non-continuous uh, treatment for their gastroesophageal reflux disease over daily therapy. Now, non-continuous treatment could be on demand, which is patient-driven. Whenever the patient uh, needs uh, treatment, they take it, and they take it for the duration they desire. Uh, and the rule is that they cannot take more than once a day. Another uh, example of non-continuous treatment is, uh, for example, uh, intermittent therapy. Uh, intermittent therapy is whenever a patient uh, needs to take the medication, they have to take it uh, for a predetermined period of time, which could be either one week or two weeks. Again, the rule is the same. They cannot take the medication more than once a day. Now, patients may prefer non-continuous treatment because it gives them personal control over the therapy itself. It can reduce costs because you don't take the medication on a daily basis. Uh, and it may reduce concerns with long-term daily use, especially when it comes to medications like prone pump inhibitors. However, prone pump inhibitors cannot serve as a good non-continuous treatment medications. Uh, primarily because of their uh, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics uh, that makes them not a great candidate for this type of therapeutic approach. There is gradual onset of acid suppression. Uh, it takes three to five days of repeat dosing for maximal acid suppression. And there is also food dependent activity. On the other hand, venaprazine, which is an investigational PCAB, uh, is a good uh, candidate for on-demand therapy, primarily because of its unique pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic uh, characteristics. It provides rapid onset of acid suppression. It achieves consistent acid suppression immediately after the first dose. Uh, the acid suppression is potent, durable, and lasts over a period of 24 hours. And its effect is food independent. So the aim of this study was to compare the efficacy and safety of different doses of vanoprazan versus placebo for the on-demand treatment of patients with non-erosive reflux disease. And on-demand was defined in this study as study drug taken in response to heartburn episodes and no repeat dose permitted within 24 hours. So the study design, uh, patient went uh, through several uh, periods uh, during this study. The first one, they went through a screening period, which lasted up to five weeks. During that period of time, uh, patients were evaluated about the frequency of their symptoms, and an endoscopy was performed to uh, document uh, that they don't have any evidence of mucosal abnormalities that are consistent with gastroesophageal reflux disease. Those patients uh, that met uh, the uh, enrollment into the run-in period then went through a run-in period that lasted four weeks. During that period, a patient received uh, vonoprazon 20 milligram daily. And subsequently, after the run-in period, then patients were randomized to receive uh, either vonoprazon 10 milligram, 20 milligram, or 40 milligram, or placebo, on demand for a period of six weeks. Subsequently, there was just a one-week uh, follow-up period of any treatment. Uh, during the 
different periods of the study, patients were provided with gelosil as a rescue antacid, and its use was recorded. Um, patients uh, recorded the information in the e diary, and uh, they were evaluated also for heart heartburn episodes relief at half an hour, one hour, one and a half hour, two hours, and three hours after study drug administration. They also recorded study medication use and the number of rescue uh, antacids that were utilized. Now, in order to enter the run-in period, this is the period where patients receive one upresan daily, 20 milligram, patients had to be at least 18 years old. Uh, during the screening period, uh, they had to have at least a frequency of four out of sec seven consecutive days with heartburn uh, symptoms. They had to have a history of heartburn for at least six months. No eros uh, erosive esophagitis or any other findings that are consistent with gastroesophageal reflux disease on screening endoscopy. And no history of functional heartburn, functional dyspepsia, Barrett's esophagus, or any other condition that may affect the esophagus. In order to enter from the run-in period into the on-demand period, patient had uh, to fulfill the following inclusion criteria. Uh, they had to complete the run-in period. They had to have at least 80% compliance with run-in study drug, meaning taking Vonaprazan 20 milligram daily. They had to have at least 80% e-diary compliance <clears throat> and no heartburn in the last seven days of the run-in period. So clearly showing um, a complete response to when I present 20 milligram before they were randomized into the on-demand period. The primary endpoint of this study was to present a valuable heartburn episodes with complete, with complete and sustained relief. Now, a valuable heartburn episodes were considered as episodes for which study drug taken, and there was at least one entry in e-diary that was completed. Complete relief was defined as relief within three hours of study drug with no rescue and tacit taken. And sustained relief was no further episodes recorded within 24 hours after uh, initiating study drug. So these are the results of the study. You can see the number of uh, patients that were screened. Uh, then uh, you can see the number of patients that ended up uh, in, in the run-in period. And then you can see how many patients were randomized to the on-demand period, which were 207. At the bottom of the slide, you can see the number of patients that ended up in each therapeutic arm of the study, around 50 uh, of the patients. And you can see also the number of valuable episodes in each group, in each group which was around uh, between 327 to 370. These are the patient characteristics that were at baseline. Uh, this is before the run-in period. You can see uh, the mean age of each group. They were about the same. They were um, around 50s. Uh, you can look at the, the gender distribution, uh, which was uh, between 52.9 to 67.3%. You can see the ethnicity of the patients. Uh, BMI uh, was uh, between 29.3 uh, and 31.9. Uh, there's also evidence here and information about the mean severity of day or nighttime heartburn between 1.5 to 1.8. And when you look at days with uh, day or nighttime heartburn, you can see that most of these patients had between five to seven days. And you can see also at the bottom, the number uh, of uh, rescue and tacit tablets that were taken per day, which was between 2.5 to 3.5. This figure actually looks at the percent of valuable heartburn episodes with complete and sustained relief. And very clearly that uh, the majority 
uh, of uh, patients uh, that receive uh, the uh, lunaprazon, either 10, 20, or 30 milli or 40 milligram, achieved both complete and sustained relief. But this was specifically pronounced uh, in those that uh, received the 40 milligram lunaprazon. Now, the uh, percentage that are presented in this slide were statistically significant as compared to placebo. In fact, we can see that the response also was relatively rapid because uh, the three therapeutic arms with vonoprazon already separated themselves from placebo during the first uh, hour of study drug administration. And it was kept throughout the first three hours and then the rest of the 24 hours. So all venoprazone doses resulted in more complete and sustained relief of heartburn episodes compared with placebo. Uh, when you look at percent of valuable heartburn episodes with complete relief, regardless if there was a sustained relief, again, uh, the numbers were even higher uh, in the venoprazone group. Uh, the 40 milligram achieved close to 80% complete relief. Uh, and uh, you can see again that uh, this, uh, uh, that complete relief was, was already achieved at least um, within the first one hour by uh, two of the gonoprazone doses as compared to uh, placebo. So all gonoprazone doses resulted in more complete relief of carbon episodes compared with placebo. Here we have uh, several key secondary endpoints during the on-demand period. Uh, the first one, the percent day study drug taken. Uh, you can see this was about the same among the different uh, treatment groups. Uh, although uh, it was a little bit higher in the, uh, in the group uh, with, uh, that was taking placebo. You can see also the tablets uh, rescue antacids per day and the percent 24 heartburn free days. So there was low study drug intake, which reflects low heartburn frequency following running period. As expected, the percent days study drug taken was similar among treatment groups and vernopazone patients took numerically fewer rescue antacids than placebo patients. From a, a safety profile, we can see that uh, during the running period, as well as on-demand uh, period, uh, vonoprazone appeared to be uh, relatively safe uh, as compared to the placebo. The, during the running period, there were only four serious adverse events, uh, two myocardial infarction, one anaphylactic reaction, and one su suicidal ideation. Only the anaphylactic reaction uh, was related to vonoprazone. During the on-demand uh, period, no individual adverse events were uh, was reported by more than one patient in a treatment group, and one participant in each treatment group reported a COVID-19 event, but there were no serious adverse events throughout uh, the study period, uh, the on-demand period, and among the different treatment groups. In fact, there were more adverse events reported by the placebo group as compared to the other uh, vonoprazone therapeutic arms. When you look at the serum gastrin levels, uh, you can see the, uh, the running baseline levels, which were very low. Uh, uh, after the uh, running period, obviously when patients receive vonoprazone 10 milligram once a day, you can see uh, an increase in the gastrin levels during the on-demand baseline. And then uh, at the end of the on-demand period, you can see that this was uh, uh, very low, the uh, gastrin levels almost returned to the running baseline. So in conclusions, when not present on-demand at all investigated doses 
was significantly better than placebo in providing rapid and sustained relief from heartburn episodes in non-erosive reflux disease patients. Vonapresan 10 and 20 milligram on demand appeared equally efficacious, while Vonapresan 40 milligram on demand provided limited extra benefit over the lower doses. And then Vonapresan on demand was well tolerated by study participants. So the findings uh, of these studies support the potential use of vanaprazan as an on-demand option for patients with non-erosive reflux disease, although a confirmatory study in a larger population uh, is warranted. Um, in fact, uh, there is an ongoing uh, phase three trial as we speak uh, with vanaprazan uh, on demand in patients with non erosive reflux disease as compared to placebo. So, thank you very much for giving me uh, the opportunity to uh, present this important study.